Hey, it's March the 12th, 2013, and I'm Drutter, and this is an update to my video about five or six days ago, which was on the divergence between silver's price and demand in 2013. And I have an update coming for a couple of major reasons, but first I briefly wanted to go over that last video. Uh, when I did it, I mentioned that I felt like uh, the observation that I had come to was a significant one and that it needed to get out there. Um, and I'm glad that it did. Uh, Silver Doctors, Brother John F., SGT Bull, Hyper Report, and others did cover the story. And Brother John F. actually gave the concept, the title, Drudder Divergence. So I thought that was kind of cool. But um, And I did pick up 100 new subscribers. Thank you. Welcome to the channel. And I got a lot of praise as well from that video. Um, another thing that happened was some people reported to me that others were stealing the story and were covering it on their own and claiming it as theirs and so on. That doesn't bother me at all. Um, all I want is for this information to get out there. I think it's significant. I think it's great. I don't need any uh, recognition for this and I don't need any... Um, nothing. I don't need anything for this. I just want this information to get out and I think it's significant so I'm glad that it is. Uh, this is just data and my analysis of the data may be my own but everyone else can come to the same conclusion. Um, other people can make these charts using the information that's uh, provided on the internet. It's all there. The Mint releases their sales data and of course we can see what the price is and we can look back and see what the price was on any year and uh, make a chart and there it is. So. The reasons that I want to um, do an update right now are twofold. One of them is that there's new data available. The Mint just released some more um, mid-month data so we can do an extrapolation and calculate out the projected March total again and uh, see if it compares with our last one. And another reason is that there is some corrections to be done and um, I'm also going to improve the chart. I've decided that these numbers here aren't necessarily helping anything. They're sort of cluttering things up. Everyone can calculate the numbers themselves. It's all available on the internet. So I'm going to get rid of those numbers. And also this data point here was actually a typo. Uh, this peak here at 6.8. People were commenting, wow, like, you know, that's one of the years where it actually didn't follow the price. The demand was extremely high. Well, actually, that's supposed to be right around here. Um, so this actually, uh, the, the typo that I did actually um, made my case harder to make. <laughs> so this chart will look even better when it's redone and this data point is fixed. It's supposed to be somewhere around oops, <laughs> somewhere around there. So those are the two main reasons why I think it's important to do an update now on this matter. And uh, I will be getting to that next, although first I'm going to go over the way that this chart is created. You can go down to the link below and click on that and check out the previous video, although it is 12 minutes long and uh, I'm going to do a summary on how this data is all come to. And then I'll show you the new chart and give my comments on it. To compare the price of silver to the demand for silver, we of course need data for the price and we need data for the demand. Nothing exactly measures the demand of silver, but one thing we can use is the demand for silver eagles and the sales of silver eagles. They're published on the United States Mint website here. Go to the year you want and then click silver, which is at the bottom, and it'll show you. Of course, we only have January, February, and part of March reporting so far. So what we're going to do is we're going to go from 2000 through 2013 inclusive. So we'll have 14 years on our chart. And we're going to use the January, February, and March totals for each of those years. But for March, of course, we only have part of the month reporting so far. So we need to get out a calculator and figure out what percentage of the month has already occurred. Today is the 12th, of course. So 12, and there's 31 days in the month. So the month is 0.387 over. Take the reciprocal of that. That's 2.58, and then multiply, by, multiply that by how many eagles have been sold so far. So 1.60 one five million so far and that gives us a projected amount of eagles sold in March of 4.13 million eagles so it's going to be a better March than February was assuming the pace continues and it will be a record March there has been no March that has done that well um, at least projected of course sales could drop off suddenly now 
Um, doesn't look like that's happening, but that is a possibility. So once we have that number for March, we can add that to the 3.3 and 7.4 million eagles sold in January and February to get a January, February, March total. Then we can do the same thing, except we don't have to extrapolate March's numbers, for each of these years. So let's say go to 2000. The 2000 numbers would be 1.8 and 0.85 and add those together and you'll get the numbers for 2000. So that'll give us all the data we need for demand going from 2000 to 2013. Next we need data for price and I chose to use the high price of each year and this uh, website here will show us the high price. Here it was 923, that was in 2005, that was the high. Here it's 14.94 and uh, so on and remember 2011 isn't on this chart here but of course we all remember the high from 2011 which was 4981 and then once you get those numbers we're going to divide those numbers by four that doesn't change anything as I said before it doesn't manipulate the data in any way it just allows me to compare all the numbers in the same chart and all there is left to do of course is to plot the data onto a chart and this is my attempt it's not that great but you get the picture. And I'm going to put this at the end of the video. I'll actually embed it in the video um, because of course now you're just looking at my screen and it's a little bit warped because my camera's not aimed directly at the screen and so forth. So this will be at the end of the video. And uh, as you can see and as we mentioned last time the price and demand are extremely highly correlated. Um, this peak is the 2011 peak in price of course in purple and this is the pullback. We see demand pull back with price as it has um, moved with price pretty much um, perfectly or almost perfectly. But um, of course there's this divergence here which is phenomenal. Um, we haven't seen anything like it at least in the past 14 years. We could probably do this graph out uh, further into the past to see how well the correlation goes in the past as well. And I may do that in the future. But um, it's quite clear that something has changed in 2013. What that is, I still don't know. Uh, this story is ongoing. I'm going to keep on following it. But um, yeah, as you can tell, especially with that data point that has been fixed, that point that was, I think, up here or something, is now uh, much closer to this. So the correlation is even more striking <laughs> when the data is correct. And uh, just this divergence is even more shocking to see. Um, what could be doing that? Why is demand so high? We're on par for a record year. In fact, uh, like I said before, at least 20% higher in demand, even though the price this year, the top price has only been about $32 this year, uh, even lower than it was in 2011 so far. And yet demand, well, almost off the chart, literally. So I'm going to continue to follow this, but I would like to open up the discussion um, area for people to talk about perhaps what they think is going on here. Why is this happening? Uh, am I not analyzing the data correctly? It doesn't seem that that's the case because it's been reviewed by several people. Um, it doesn't seem to be a problem with the data. So, you know, what's going on? Why are people buying so much physical silver right now even as the paper price drops? I think it's worth noting that the demand we're seeing so far in 2013 correlates to a high price of silver at about $61 per ounce. As I mentioned in the last video, I do think this is a story and I would like it to be seen by more people and heard by more people. So if you can help amplify my voice somehow, um, share it around or whatever you do to get this out there, I will allow embedding on this video so it can be added to Facebook or blogs or whatever. And uh, let's continue to follow this, guys, because something happened in 2013 here, and the story is yet to unfold. So let's keep on it. Talk to you soon.